Welcome back painting friends. Today we're going to paint a girl in the rain because it is rainy out here in southern Indiana. So this is also a request from a viewer on my Facebook page. Colors you're going to need are white, black, blue, pink, red, and yellow. I always use my favorite four brushes. I always have my one inch flat brush, my 10, six, and one round brush on hand for painting. Don't forget to have a cup of water and a rag for keeping those brushes clean. And remember, if you're liking what you're seeing here, like and subscribe to the YouTube channel so that you get notifications on all of my newest paintings. Let's get started with our one inch flat brush. What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna cover this entire canvas in white. Super easy, can't mess it up. With that same brush and just a little bit of black paint, I'm gonna pull in some lines and these lines are gonna go in from the outside edge. And this is gonna kind of be our ground and our ground is going to go right along here. It's like a little pathway and then it's gonna stop. So as we're pulling these lines in, we're gonna go right along those edges and let it kind of feather out into that center ground. That's why we had to add the white on first. We can grab a little bit more black paint towards the bottom or towards the edges just to really give them a nice deep color. Same brush, I'm gonna take some black paint and I'm going to drop a couple of lines going vertically on my canvas. And these lines can be close together, they can be far apart, but a couple of lines. I'm gonna wipe my brush off. And then with my brush, I'm, oop, I guess I did not wipe my brush off that much and I hit my camera, sorry guys. I'm gonna pull these lines up along the back edge. This is the start of our forest. I'm gonna go ahead and just set that brush in the water for now and find my number 10 round brush. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create um, a couple of trees in this gray area. And we're, we don't have to line our walkway, but these trees are gonna be black. So I'm gonna grab some black paint and I like to make my trees look like a letter Y. So that means I'm gonna start at the top and pull a line down. See how it makes a Y and it's a wiggly Y. We don't need to put a whole lot of detail on these trees. Um, this is a winter picture. It's raining in the winter here. If you want this to be a spring picture, all you need to do is add a couple of pink or yellow buds on the trees. If you notice your paintbrush is getting a little too saturated with white, all you gotta do is just wipe it off. So I'm gonna start with my letter Y's and then I'm gonna go in with my number six round brush and I'm gonna add some more lines. So these would be more letter Y's. And you can make as many trees or as few trees as you want, but let me show you my little trick. So as you're painting these letter Y's on your trees, you're gonna notice that you can see every place that your brush stops. And that does annoy me because it it looks kind of choppy and if that's what I'm going for, it's fine, but I want it to be smoother. So I'm going to go to the tip of each branch and I'm going to pull those colors all the way down to the bottom. And that's going to do two things. First of all, it's going to get rid of those choppy little lines, but then it's also going to help blend my tree and make it look as though there might be some bark or some texture on the tree. So it's really a two sided reason for doing this. All right, I'm gonna pop myself in a speed motion and knock out all my trees. We 
gonna let this background dry. When we come back in, we're gonna add our girl, some highlights, and all that rain. Now that the background's dry, we're gonna start laying out um, some highlights, some colors, and of course our girl. So first things first, I'm gonna take a little bit of blue and I'm gonna make small little lines down the side of my trees that faces the walkway. Um, and these should be kind of random little lines. These are kind of like highlights. And then to copycat that on the opposite side, I'm gonna do the same thing with black paint. So just small little lines of black paint to create what's gonna look like um, a shadow, give it a little bit more depth. So I'm gonna pop myself in a speed motion. You can use your number six round brush. I might switch over to that. Um, or your number 10 brush, it's up to you. But I'm gonna pop myself in a speed motion and I'm gonna add all of these little highlights, all of these little dark shadowy areas, and then we'll be ready to move on. With a little bit of light blue, white, and black, I'm just gonna make a small grayish blue concoction on my palette. So it's a lot of white, medium blue, and almost no black. The black's just there for adding some, some dark to it. So I'm gonna mix these colors up. And with this really light blue color, I'm gonna wipe most of the paint off my brush. I just want a little bit on there, but I'm gonna add some small little lines right here on the ground. So very light brush strokes. I would call this um, dry brush where your brush is almost dry and you're just putting a little bit of color onto that ground. same brush. I'm going to take some of that and I'm just going to kind of dab it towards the top of my canvas and pull just a little bit of that light blue down. So I'm dabbing it on the very edge of my canvas and then I'm just pulling some of that light blue down. really been debating adding like a street light in here or street posts. I'm going to, I might hold off. It might show up. I don't know. That's why I have the yellow. I kind of wanted to have a, a light in there, but I'm unsure if I want to put that in now, but I'm going to go ahead and lay out my girl in the rain. So I've got my number six round brush and you can choose any color you want for the umbrella or the girl. Um, but I'm going to start with yellow for my umbrella. And I'm gonna just find a spot up here in the middle of my trees that's open and make a big, huge curved line. And from there, I'm gonna make a scalloped line, just to kind of a bumpy line. Oh, look, I got some black in there. Gotta wipe that off. And then I can fill that in. This is probably gonna take two coats of paint because I picked a really light, bright color. The next thing I'm gonna do is wipe my brush off. And again, you can choose any color you want for her dress. I am gonna go red. So I've got the red and pink. The pink's gonna kind of be my highlight color. And straight down from the center of the umbrella, 
I'm gonna make a V shape. I can go ahead and paint that V shape in. And then the skirt, I'm gonna make kind of flowy. So you can make your skirt a straight down triangle, um, but I'm gonna kind of make mine wispy. And with that, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna, actually, I'm gonna make it go mostly this way. It's like there's some wind. That's why the umbrella's tilted a little bit. Maybe add some pink in there, maybe some white. Now, before I get too far in my dress, I better go ahead and add the legs in because I think they'll be kind of hard once they're in there. I am just going to make a short little triangle that comes down from the dress. Um, and this would be like her, I'm going to guess she has leggings on. It looks really cold in this picture. It's like a rainy snow picture. So I'm just gonna go in and play with some of these pinks, some of these reds, making this dress look nice and flowy. I can wipe my paintbrush off and grab some black paint and make a small little black belt right through here. And I can't forget her arms. It would look kind of weird for her not to have any coming off of these shoulders. So a little bit of paint. Oop, that's a lot of paint. A little bit of red paint. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my brush and I'm just gonna come down and over down and over. Add a little bit of pink in there so it matches the rest of the dress. And I'm going to let this dry before we add in our final details, which will include some detail on our umbrella and our rain. All right, it's final detail time. So um, on my umbrella, I'm gonna take my number six round brush and a little bit of watered down black paint. Anytime I make really skinny black lines, I like to water my paint down, make it a little bit more like an ink. And then I'm gonna put a little small knob at the top. And then from each point, I'm gonna make a curved line up to that top. and go ahead and take that little line and make an edge along the bottom of my umbrella. Now, as far as my girl's dress, I'm gonna take some white paint and make some, just a little bit more distinguished lines over here on this left-hand side. Same thing right over here, maybe on the edges of her, her arms. Now you can add an, a, like a pattern or polka dots on your umbrella if you want. Um, I'm just gonna add a little bit of white paint for some highlights. So just a couple of little lines along the top and then maybe just above the bump as well. Now let's talk about those raindrops. So there's a couple different ways to do raindrops, okay? You can take the back of your brush and drop them on. You could take the tip of your brush and just kind of drop them everywhere. Um, I'm gonna do something kind of messy. So I'm gonna take my number 10 round brush 
and add water to my light blue paint, that light bluish gray paint we made, the one that we use this color on right here. And with that really, really, really watery paint, I'm gonna put two fingers right by my canvas and I'm just gonna tap. Now, the dangerous part is number one, my camera is gonna get paint on it, okay? But <laughs> uh, your walls, your face, there's gonna be paint everywhere. So have a safe space to do this and don't just do it like in your nice, pretty white craft room with white couch and white carpet and all that. You're not gonna be happy. But you just take two fingers and you just kind of throw that paint on there and it gives you like this really great splatter effect, okay? And if you keep your paintbrush and your fingers where they're pointing down, those drips and drops will look like rain coming down, not floating up. love the amount of splatters I have going on. Now, if any of my splatters are too big, they will start to drip. Um, so if you've got some big splatters, make sure your canvas lays down flat pretty quickly after you do this. So the last thing I have to tell you is when you are finished painting, you gotta pick out a color that's gonna uh, show up well on your canvas and sign your name. I always put my initials in the bottom right corner down here. Remember that I never get to see what you're painting at home unless you post it to our Facebook page, Painting With A Purpose. Be sure that you like and subscribe to the YouTube channel, Painting With Purpose, so you are kept up to date on all of the tutorials. And remember, as always, stay kind, stay creative, and stay safe. Have a great day, friends. Bye now.